Hey, my name is Jacob Peskin. Um, some of you might know me as Gabriel Black. I'm a singer-songwriter. And I was just diagnosed with a really rare cancer called a desmoplastic small round cell tumor. Um, supposedly, there's only been like four to 500 recorded cases of this since the 1980s. Um, and it's really rare, pretty deadly. The stats are not in my favor. But the odd, the odds are not in my favor. The, the stats are pretty bad, and um, this is my journey with cancer. This is my journey with cancer. This is my journey with cancer. It all started about five months ago. I started having testicular pain. One day it was so bad, my girlfriend brought me to the urgent care. They didn't think it was anything, or they didn't know what it was at least. So I went home with some antibiotics. Um, eventually I went back again uh, a few months later. Then I went to my primary care there was no pain at the time, so I didn't even bring it up. But then the next, uh, that weekend, I started having pain again, so I went to the urgent care. I scheduled an appointment with a urologist. The urologist thought it was prostatitis, which is very common for people my age. I am 27 years old, um, and it's not that big of a deal. It's a bad infection that you just take antibiotics for. So he gave me strong antibiotics for two weeks and that didn't do it. I was still having pains um, and I was still having pains and I was still peeing a lot at night and my stream was not strong and it kind of took a lot to get it to come out. Um, so I went back after about two weeks on antibiotics and they decided to do and they decided to do an ultrasound. Um, they were going to do an ultrasound of my testicles and an ultrasound of my like pelvis area. They started with the pelvis and as we were doing the pelvis, they just stopped. And I knew something was up. And I said, Aren't you gonna do my testicles too? And they're like, No we're gonna go back to the to the doctor and um, I think I got like a little smirk on my face like great you know because I had been asking the urgent care I was like is there any way this is a cancer or something like that and the doctor at the urgent care was like no way you're way too young um, but it was and uh yeah then they sent me to get a cat scan of the area i went and did that immediately um and i called my mom and my mom left her house which was seven hours away and just drove down um the next day we went back to the urologist and they told us that they thought they told us that they thought I had a sarcoma which is a rare form of cancer um, I, I, I still don't know really about all this stuff I'm, I'm, I'm learning but at the same time I'm really not I've, uh, I've been very lucky to have my mom and a close group of family friends who have really put their effort into it and they've learned a lot and I'm just kind of here in shock but um, uh, I'm scared I'm really scared um, we ended up calling some more family friends 
and um, we ended up calling some more family friends and a great, great guy named Mark Berger um, who works in, I believe it's like medical sales or something like that. I don't really know, but he, he, his company or the board or whatever, it, it, there's a bunch of oncologists on it and urologists and he called in some favors and eventually I got in with like one of the best urologists in the country at UCLA. It's put to the very front of the line. Um, you know, otherwise an appointment would have been for like February and this was November. <laughs> this was October, maybe even. It might have been the last week of October. Yeah. Um, and, uh, we ran some tests, you know, all my blood work had been fine. I'd gotten blood work all summer from the urgent care, from my primary care. My blood work was fine. My blood work never showed anything. Um, I was in fine health, you know, besides some testicular pain. By the time I got to UCLA, I was starting to have some abdominal pain and some lower back pain and the peeing issue. Um, it, uh, um, at UCLA, at UCLA, we ended up doing biopsy. And then it was just a waiting game. Um, before we got the results back, um, my urologist tried to put stents in my kidneys to help my kidneys flush out a bit more, help my kidneys flush out a bit more um, because they were afraid that they were going to get backed up and I guess become, I, I, they were afraid they were going to get backed up and I guess, you know, that could lead to kidney failure. Um, but the surgery didn't go as planned. Um, they they were they were putting something up my penis, <laughs> like up the hole in my penis, um, and then into the kidneys. But the the tumor was blocking the kidneys, so they weren't able to. But my penis still got all cut up, which was which would have been expected either way. <laughs> but at least one way I would have at least had these stents in my kidneys, but. Mm, I didn't get them in. Hopefully I don't actually need to have them in. Um, but for like a week, I was just pissing blood <laughs> and it hurt. <laughs> it is scary when you just start seeing blood come out of your penis. Um, I guess ladies know what it's like, periods, but for a guy that is, and it hurt. Um, but yeah, so, so after that, it was just the waiting game for the biopsy. And um, we got the biopsy results back, and it was what all these doctors kind of thought it was. A sarcoma, and it was this desmoplastic small round cell tumor. Um, which, like I said, is really rare. And, I mean, if you look at statistics online, it says five-year survival rate is like 15 percent it's a one five not five zero one five some other friends of ours some smarter friends of ours have looked into it and they say it's a bit higher of a percentage but it's still not good and it's it's really scary now i'm saying this to you on november 17th 2022 I got my biopsy done on November 4th so about two weeks ago I've had some time to think about all this you know I'm meditating every day which I've done in the past a little bit but not like this and, and my diet we completely changed my diet which my doctors seem to think doesn't really make a difference some of the nurses have said, yes, this is great. You know, I'm also going to be working with a naturopath oncologist. But um, the doctors seem to think it doesn't really make a difference. Really, at the end of the day, it's just, does the chemo work? But um, to this point, we pretty much cut out all red meat. Um, 
all added sugar, all dairy, um, a lot of different like cooking oils, butter, you know, we use ghee instead. Um, eating a lot of pomegranates because supposedly pomegranates are good for killing cancer or something like that. And, um, turmeric, turmeric, I don't know how to say it. They're taking those pills and drinking tea with that. Green tea supposedly is also good for this. Um, a lot of avocados. Um, but you know, it's been hard. And, and, and over the last week, my mom also had an emergency hysterectomy. She came down here to help me out. And then literally the night of my biopsy, she's in my bed, just chilling, you know, and she starts screaming in pain because her ovaries are like, because she's having intense pain in her ovaries. We call an ambulance, paramedics come. They think she's just having an anxiety attack because her son being diagnosed with cancer. But, <laughs> um, she goes to the hospital, the local one, um, not very good local one, and they think she has cancer, okay? <laughs> They tell her that they can't really do anything for her till Monday. This is a Friday night. <laughs> um, so her friend picks her up and brings her to UCLA. UCLA says, oh, no, you don't have cancer. You're fine. Then they change their mind. They're like, potentially you do. They've sent her home. She's gone back. It's just this confusing mess. Eventually, later that week, she goes back, and they do a hysterectomy, and they take out her ovaries and whatever a hysterectomy includes. Thankfully, she does not have cancer, but it was crazy. <laughs> all of this has happened in two weeks. All of this has happened in two weeks. But the reason I started this today is because tomorrow I think the journey really begins. Um, tomorrow I get a port put in, which is gonna be like right here or right here, I don't know. And it's an easier access for nurses to put an IV into me for chemo and next Friday the day after Thanksgiving on November 25th 2022 I'm about to start I will start nine months of chemotherapy intense chemotherapy five days in the hospital getting chemo for 24 hours a day going home for two to three weeks Going back to the hospital for a day to get more chemo. Going home two to three weeks. And then repeat. Five days in the hospital. Home. Day in the hospital. Home. Five days in the hospital. Home. Day in the hospital. Home. For nine months. And you know, I wouldn't be upset if I, this, if I had to do this, but I knew that it would like work. But the fact is, I don't know if it's going to work. And a lot of people die from... Well, not a lot of people, because there's there's not a lot of recorded cases. But most of the people that get what I get die. Within five years. Because, you know, the first round, yeah, it might work. But then it comes back stronger. And I don't want to die. I don't know who, I don't want to die, I'm not ready to die, I want to live a long happy life, you know, I, one day I want to have a farm and kids and horses and a wife and like, even just over the course of these two weeks I think my priorities have changed a lot. I used to care so much about social media and what people thought and like I wanted to be somebody and you know I, I, I was I had I, there were moments when I had a successful little music career happening you know I toured Europe with Black Bear um, I had a song in the show Euphoria I had a song in MGK's movie um, I signed to a major record label. I 
got a lot of love from play, from from sites like Pigeons and Planes and Line of Best Fit. I signed a big publishing deal. You know, I there's been a lot of really cool things and I've been blessed with a unique life to this point. But now I'm part of a club that I don't want to be part of at all. It's a really small club. And it's a really bad club. And I guess my only hope is that I'm part of an even smaller club, which is people who've had this and survived. I think I've been pretty strong up to this point. I make a lot of, my mom says, gallows humor, morbid jokes about me dying. It's kind of my way to cope. And then I, I say the joke and then like I get a little like like I'm about to cry. But I'm okay. I have faith that everything will work out however it's meant to work out. And I do believe that I'm supposed to survive this. But you never know. I know. My doctor told me to think of... My doctor told me to write down a quote. What I know today to be true is... Dot, dot, dot. And what I know today to be true is that I'm alive. I feel okay. And I got a lot of love and support around me. And that's good enough reason to smile. So yeah, my name again is Jacob Peskin and this is the start of my cancer journey. This is what real warriors are made of. And I'm a warrior and I will survive. Talk soon.